Hey guys, I'm back with another video, yo, yo, like Carmen San Diego. Okay, anyway, so I've been reading this awesome book, Mind, Mind Management and Raja Yoga. And they had an excerpt about the elements. So I thought, well shit, let's fucking talk about it. So here's a breakdown. Let's start with earth. Earth represents ahamkara, the ego, okay? It's fixed on your own identity and form, okay? And nature, all right? So the earth element is also fixed. The hardest thing that you're gonna have to get through in this lifetime and many others is your ego, right? Ego is identity, okay? It's the my experience. I'm an individual, my soul, right? All of that. Ego stays pretty cemented in, right? Earth element. Water. Water represents chitta or memory, storehouse of life experiences and impressions. Life memory, right? Water slips through your fingertips. It doesn't stay. Memories don't either. You're generally just left with an impression of these things. You might even be acting off of things that happened in a past life that you just can't remember, but you continuously act them out in this lifetime. By tapping into the water element, you are diving into the deep unconscious, the things that you are unaware of, okay? That's water. Now, let's go to fire. Fire represents buddhi, not booty, buddhi, okay? That is desires, passions, and ideas. That sounds familiar. What is that? Oh, we talked about it last video. That's right, it's our thoughts, okay? A strong force that logic and guidance fail before it. It's when you're given direction. It's when you're told, don't do this shit. And you're like, I'm gonna do it, right? Fire element, okay? And these desires fuel your life. So if you have goals, right, that's gonna fuel your life in a particular direction. That is tapping into the fire element. And then last but not least, we got air. Air represents the manas or the sequential mind, okay? Its function is the clarity or confusion. So manas are not actually the mind, but is the part of the mind that forms when you have thoughts that assist you or hinder you, right? It gives you focus and distraction. And I started this part because most of us live in this area of the mind. So my dogs are about to bark right now. You're probably gonna hear them. <laughs> but most of us live in this area of the mind. So a lot of times we are so focused on being clear or falling into confusion, we're actually living from our mana state Notice how previously, when I was talking about rituals, right? We said, invoke the air element for mental illness. Are those connections being made? There they go. Are those connections being made? Yeah, 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 because that's the manas. You're dealing with the manas. So this is a very, very quick video that I wanted to make though, updating us on the aspects of the elements and how they play a part with the whole function of our mind. Because a thing to keep in mind, pun totally intended, is that we refer to the mind just like we refer to the body. When we talk about our body, right, uh, we have to be specific about which part we're talking about, right? We don't say, oh, my spleen, right? Maybe sometimes we do, but most of the time we just say, oh, the health of my body. It's the same with the mind. The mind has four different parts to it. Okay, and these four different parts can be illustrated within the elements. So when you are doing your rituals or evoking the elements, don't just look at the past video that I had about the specific rituals, but also tap into which part of the mind you are also evoking. That was it. That's the video. 
I hope this helps you on your journey to becoming the best you possible. Many blessings on your journeys, and I'll see you next time.